Children are very important and deserve the best, the best we can give them, generations to come. Uh, mind, body, and soul, these are aspects we need to take care of from time to time. How do we foster and ensure that they have a future worth having? We're talking about the education, but we're just talking about what goes into their head as against the environment where they get to uh, school. And there's a woman who is very passionate about these children. We're talking about the very uh, woman behind the Dolly foundations right there Dolly Children Foundation specifically well she plans to alleviate uh, the pains of these children and in the past 10 years she's reached over 5,000 children in 22 communities we'll be talking about that journey and this woman making a change uh, even in unlikely societies and unlikely areas I have in the studio right here I have Dolapo or Sintu Yik I had to rehearse that one. Dollar for awesome to me. Right, did I get it? Yeah. Yay! And we got it this time around, Dollar for It's good to have you yeah. join me, right, yeah. And she has a kind smile. I call it a kind smile. Wait until she begins talking about these children and you'll understand what I said. Therein lies the magic. Dollar for thank you for joining me thank on you. this show. Your story happens to be one um, that leaves me in awe every time I think about it in Nigeria and having a background in social welfare which you decided and deliberately decided to focus on. Uh, how long uh, did it take you to realize you had a, a, a passion for children? How way back can you trace it? Well, um, looking back, I think it all started when I was in Tronde level in school and um, that was 2006. Precisely. That was 2006, April precisely. That oh, was, you remember the month. Yes, <laughs> what I remember happened? the month. I remember the month. Because during that time, I was actually studying botany. That's my first degree. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I was actually studying botany. And um, but along the line, I, well, I just went all through school. Let's study botany. Let's get there and come <laughs> out. But... When I was in 200 level, I could remember one of the events that struck me was um, I think I was walking along the expressway in front of my school and um, I saw a woman begging for hands with a two-day-old um, two baby. So, you know, that sight actually stuck in my memory that why would, you know, a child, you know, be exposed to this kind of environment? And um, I went back. I told my friends and two weeks after I organized like a feed I organized a project wow. on feed the child project so I made a list of all the things I think wow. we we'll need for the project and I started telling people about it. Uh, what did people think? These people you told about it, this friends, what did they think about it? Well, at first they, they were all excited, but you know they were excited for me but when it comes to getting the phones planning, uh -huh. I had to do the work and but during the first week, nothing came up. It was actually the second week that everybody that didn't give me any response started giving me. I got money in kind donation, like clothes and all that. And so it was actually a big project for me because we actually reached out to 40 families and their children on the expressway that way. And that was your first outing? Yes, yes. Was that the aha moment for you? The moment when you decided this was this is what I have to do, or was that another moment, uh, you know, before you realized that, yes. that this is what I want to do? I, I think this is what I want to do for a very very long time to come. Okay, I think um, you know I finished during the time I was in school. I was busy also organizing community different community projects, and um, when I got to my final when when I went for a national youth service call. Luckily enough, I would call it lucky enough, I was posted to a village, a remote village that there was no light for like the one year that I was there. Now that's strange, you know, and, and you went dancing like, oh, this is time to make a change. Or you just thought to yourself, whatever, wherever, I still have to make a change. Well, actually, when I went there, because I was posted to a different community, a different state outside, I had to learn new languages, I had to adapt to the conditions there. There was no water, there was no light, so it's was practically a new place for me to start over and um, one of the moments I had there was 
you know, because I was trained, I was teaching in a school, and in the mornings we walked down the road, and I'm always seeing these young children, primary school, going to school barefooted, and I remember my dad told me a story of how, you know, for years he walked barefooted. You know, that memory stuck. I was like, wow. This used to be my dad, and I, as a child, never walked barefooted. So you know, it was it was when I knew, yes, this is my calling. Although I have other stories that summed <laughs> it up, I was like, wow, this is just it. So. Now you speak about that time uh, from your school days. I'm aware that perhaps this passion is what pushed you into going um, uh, going on for a master's degree and uh, social welfare. You did have some experiences in the, in the UK, which I wouldn't permit us to talk about everything. But then when you got back, you went to a very, very basic community. Yeah. Like talking about a community and uh, uh, talk to us about that experience and you decided to start off there. Was that deliberate or was it something you just thought after a while that I have to do something here and make an impact here? Well. You know, before I actually traveled out, I've already written everything down that, oh, I'm going to the UK. Now going to the UK, why I would say it was very intentional for me was that the course they actually gave me living in Nigeria was in waste management. But I knew that since I knew this is a calling for me, I knew I had to change the course. And because I wanted, I want to have a background, you know, in child in order for me to be able to be excellent in what I'm doing. So I actually changed my course to child health and social care. And I measured all my assignments and even the work, you know, I did outside school was all children related. So I had different fields of experiences with children with special needs, foster children, you know, stuff like that. And even after school, working with children, um, maybe they're having issues at home and all that. So I knew immediately we finished and after working for a while, I knew coming home, you know, I've already started only Children Foundation because before I traveled, so I knew coming home is bringing those experiences back, you know, and putting, and being practical about them in Nigeria. So. It was intentional for me to go there and come back home and do something. All right, so tell me, you get back to Nigeria. What was the first community you found yourself attending to the needs? Well, getting back to Nigeria, if I if I remember precisely, there's this community I work with right now. What community is it? Makogi is in Ogun State. That's where I started like a big project. And that's where I'm still working on, aside other communities. So I started with Makogi Community in Magdumongo State. And um, then, and uh, why I started was that I was nearly wedded and I moved into the new environment. And most time when I go out and come back, you know, there's this school I'm always seeing. So I'm always thinking, oh, what's, uh, maybe it's an abandoned school. Only for me to discover later on that it was actually, it's actually, you know, used daily on daily basis by children i'm like the look the outlook everything the environment is not actually pleasant for them so and that's how we started big again you, you help now she's downplaying a lot of this and uh, you know uh, <laughs> she's been very very modest mm -hmm. and the truth is that you did uh, you know find a way to innovate you know yes. that building and not only that but you sort of like uh, went about personally raising that fund yes and and uh to the tune of what it's over 2.5 million just for the building project just for the building project 2.5 she single-handedly went about you know getting that money raised did you have government support for that no but actually the 2.5 was actually i told friends and families i had people that you know yeah but you them. had to get them involved yes in that. Yes. and what was that experience like it wasn't encouraging. And <laughs> I must confess, at one point, I just felt, oh God, what, what am I doing? Who pushed me into this? Because we wrote letters upon letters. Actually, the school was actually housing at that time 272 pupils in the class, and they have no facility like toilet, no staff office, no fence, you know, convey them and all that. So we had to pull down the whole building and build a fresh one and stuff. So right now we are giving them a block of four classes, staff office, library and store. 
which is about <laughs> this year is oh, it's almost rounding up right now. So and that's our first phase. And when we when we when we were challenged with finances, we didn't stop at that. What we did was to start a reading club since we are giving them a library in the first place. So well, we started a reading club with them. Uh, all right, just just let me come in here because I I deliberately got this list. You know, you have the reading club, after school program, summer tutoring, back to school initiative, trainings for public primary school uh, teachers, and you know you have the sponsorship segment. Yeah. All from this. Now, did you know it was going to blow into this proportion at the point you were starting? I probably just wanted to just give a couple of people, feed them, help them with stuff, and then build a school, and then you realize there are more needs. There are more needs. Yes. Actually, what happened was that when we got to the school, it was actually my husband that convinced me going to the school. We started with a Christmas project. So I was actually thinking of just organizing, like, you know, back to school, giving them exercise books, and just moving on to another school. But, you know, we had, we had to do, like, a needs assessment you know analysis on the school and we discovered that's not their major need and it's actually the school building so you know we started that and when we're starting we never have in mind of you know the reading club the after school the summer tutorial program the training for teachers but during reflection and evaluation monitor and evaluation of every project we carried out at the school we're able to know that okay in order for us to actually meet the needs of every child imagine let me give you an instance most of the children there are actually engaged in commercial activities and you know immediately they come to school in the morning after immediately after school hours they are either hawking or selling wares or you know involved in farming so there's no they actually did not have any time to read you know per se and by the time they come back to school the next morning you know what there was no follow-up so what we started was that okay if any child is missing out in school in school work the child can actually catch up during an after school program if any child is not actually catching up again in an after school program the child will catch up in the summer tutorial program hmm. that was how we you know it wow. was uh, and if any child in case it's just like a basic educational needs that is actually not making the child to be focused in school we say okay we are going to supply that so we are giving wow. you everything you need and for the ones that are financially challenged maybe one of their parents are terminally ill or something like that you know that maybe from a young from a young age they are caregivers and that's why they are not focusing on school we actually say okay no problem we'll sponsor you we we'll sponsor you throughout school time so you know we are actually uh, approaching this issue then then when it comes to basic family education in an holistic way you know so no child will be left behind, behind. All right, well, that's a lot. This woman has got her hands full. And to think it only started off with just a, a, a dream, just a dream per se. Now, um, I, I'd like to ask you, uh, before I go on to the question of uh, where you find yourself for the next five years, let's talk about the system, uh, you know, and what you feel needs to be done, both within Nigeria and Africa as a whole. What issue do you think we need to focus on the government? I think. It's starting from part of the needs or major needs that needs to be addressed is that even if you look at the you know budget for education, it's not really you know it's not really um, substantial, substantial like, that. like that. And um, we can't. I believe the government cannot do it alone. We need people like me, people like you, to rise up and do something. Although I won't confess, I won't. I, won't, I, I must confess that. The system could frustrate you because I remember coming from the UK and how to write letters upon letters before I could get an approval. It wasn't that easy. But you know, when we start when we start a movement of change like that, I know other people will join us you know, and be able to make something more, you know, impactful in every community. And going to the question you wanted to ask me five that years. in five years. I intend to take, you know, a school at a time. While in Dolly Children Foundation, what we do, we don't just call it a public school. Our target is to work with public primary schools. And if you look at the way the public primary school is managed in Nigeria, it's like there should be a public school in every community. So we would go to every community and take a school part-time, 
you know right now we started with one school in the same community we're already scaling up to another school and we have other children in other neighboring communities that are interested in our summer tutoring program which i know this year is going to be a big one yeah. so you know if we're already covering that environment yeah. and spreading so in the next five years i believe by god we will have reached out to more than 10 schools and to be on a continual basis so. wow all right, well, we'll wish you the best of luck with that one because we'll be keeping tabs on you like we always say. So thinking about how to change a life, you'd be shocked at how the simple basic actions matter and how far they can go. Every child matters. And in the words of my guest, Dolapo Sutui, no child should be left behind. My name is Femi Tundi Thanks for listening and uh, keep the conversations going on.